Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Louis Patron bringing you the Key West Lou Legal Hour. I say good morning to all my friends here in Key West and South Florida. I also say good morning to those who are listening in Australia, in the Philippines, in Japan, in China, Beijing, big group, in Indonesia, Jakarta, Indonesia, Delhi, India, and in uh, Rome, Navarro, and Milan, Italy, Paris, and Chamonix, France, Crete, Greece, my friend Jimmy Brown, who just wrote to me this week again, Jimmy Brown in Crete, Greece, in Greece also, Athens, Santorini, uh, Mykonos, Armagos, Fiorini, a new place in Greece, London, and in South Africa, Kalitstorp, Rita, how are you in Kalitstorp? And these are loyal followers of this show. They read my blog every day. I love them all. I love all of you that watch the show. I thank you. Uh, and in the United States, uh, just about every state. And now in South America for the last month, we're in Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. People are watching the show. And I point this out to you because I want you to know how this show is expanding. Uh, there are records kept by TV people. I don't know how they do it. I'm just my job is to sit here and tell you what I think, but other people do the mechanics. This show is seen in 35 to 40 different countries. Okay, they are looking at it right now. People in 35 to 40 different countries. Would you believe? So, that having been said, let's get going. This was a great week. This was a great week, even in sports. I have yet to speak of sports on the show. This morning, I want to speak of sports uh, to open the show. The Super Bowl. I thought it was one of the greatest games I've ever seen, Super Bowl games. A lot of people disagree with me. How can you beat the scenario where one team is winning big at the end of the first half, the, second, the team losing okay, by about 20 points comes back big in the second half, and now the teams are like, three points apart, four points, or a touchdown apart, and the team that's losing with two minutes to go has the ball on the other team's seven-yard line. They've got four downs to put that ball across the goal line seven yards away, and Baltimore made that great defensive stand. It's a rarity, even in professional football, and they held them. They held them, and San Francisco couldn't score. Wild. The whole game was wild. I loved it. It's good for sports. It's good for those watching all over America. And Sunday brought us another sporting event that I want to make mention of. Um, golf. Mickelson won. He won pretty big in the tournament he was in by four strokes, I think. The course was pretty easy because the greens, for some reason, were just right. People had minus 20, minus 25, minus 28, I think Mickelson had. That, those are big numbers. What I wanted to say, though, is this. Mickelson won last weekend. Big name. Two weekends ago, Tiger Woods won a his first tournament this year. He won again. Tiger didn't play in this past one. So now we got Tiger Woods, Mickelson in that order. And you got this, this guy, Snedeker. He keeps coming around. Uh, he's always near the top. He won the $10 million in the, the last big tournament last year. And I think he was second or third uh, behind Mickelson this weekend. I hope that this year we have Mickelson, Woods, and Snedeker fighting every week for the number one spot to win. Because golf came into being promin prominence, into prominence, into the public loving it, wanting to see it, being excited by it, with guys like Nicholas, Palmer, Trevino, Player. And back in their days, st day, starting in the 1960s, every week, every tournament, it was Nicholas Player, Lee Trevino, and Gary Player fighting for the top spot. Nicholas and Palmer won most of the time. Trevino and Player would be two or three, but Trevino and Player would also win. For years, for years, not just the American public, the world public got tied up in this whole golf thing and watch to see which one of these four was going to come out number one. It added to the excitement, and I hope we have a Nicholson, Woods, Schnedeker situation this year. Having said all that, I'm going to move on now to 
story about a war hero. His name is Paul Schroeder. Paul Schroeder, 41 years old, Texas. And this just happened. <laughs> Some people are stupid, but who knows. He claimed, he claimed that he fought in Iraq, Afghanistan, Africa, Central and South America. He did a couple of tours of duty, he claimed, in the military, and he fought in all those places. Not only did he fight, he was some sort of a hero. He received a silver star, two purple hearts, three bronze stars, and two meritorious service medals. Well, he wasn't, and he was going around. He's telling everybody, I, you know, I'm a hero in effect. I was here, here, and here. I got all these medals. Now he applies for a special license plate with the Department of Motor Vehicles in Texas. The Texas Department of Motor Vehicles has a plate that says War Hero. And of course, Paul wants the plate that says War Hero because he has told the whole world he is a war hero. In order to get that plate, you have to have your discharge certificate, which he had. He had been in the military. He didn't do any of these things, though. He had been in the military. And he had to dress it up a little bit. He had to, had to alter his discharge certificate to make himself look like a hero, which he did. Well, the Department of Motor Vehicles caught on to it that it was a phony certificate and that it had been corrected, amended, altered. And he got arrested, federal crime. And he got arrested for two things. Lying about his military record and that he was a hero and he won all these medals and fought in all these places. And the other was that he submitted a falsified document, a federal document he falsified, his discharge certificate, and he was charged with that. Case comes to trial. This is a federal matter completely now in federal court. All the charges about his bragging were thrown out. That he was in, he got this medal, the Silver Star, two Bronze Stars, that he fought in all these different places, uh, that he had been wounded, because the court said, that's free speech. He was puffing. He was making himself more important than he was. Many people do this in our society, and they found nothing wrong with it. It's his constitutional right of free speech, which gives him the right to puff about what he's talking about, to brag, and even lie. However, however, the falsification of a federal document is a serious matter. They got him there. And uh, he got 30 days in jail, a $3,000 fine, and a one-year probation. Now, let me tell you quickly, there was a case a year ago, I told you, that went before the United States Supreme Court. This fellow was running for some school board office in California. He said he was a Congressional Medal of Honor winner. Afterwards, after the election, which he won, it was found out that he was lying. The case went to the United States Supreme Court, and it's that case that this judge relied on. That case said you, that was just puffing. He can say he won the Medal of Honor, even if he did not. It's his constitutional right to free speech, which gives him the right to lie in this instance. It's an interesting world we live in, isn't it? And this is a great country but we, because we can lie in certain things and places and make ourselves more than we actually are. Stay with me. We're going to break, and I'll be back.